and welcome back to the homestead did you guys watch yesterday's video or the last video that we posted about that stick and how it's going to produce tons of food like pounds hundreds of pounds of food i forgot to bring you guys over to the apple tree these are the apple trees that we planted several years ago doing really well this year uh, this one's doing really good. That one's really butted out. We had a few problems with the apple trees. Let me show you those real quick. And then we're going to get on to this gas station. I want to tell you guys what's going on with this uh, gas station video. So i got to keep you guys updated when I give you some information. Um, so here we go. But first, I'm going to walk you over here and show you a few of these apple trees. That's our log cabin right there. I built that myself with the help of a few friends with no experience. So if you guys want to live this lifestyle, you can do it. You just got to do a lot of homework and uh, don't get analysis paralysis. <laughs> All right, so this apple tree here, as you can see, is a little bit smaller. See that? And down at the bottom, you can see where it actually busted. Okay, so we had a nice little baby tree growing and then it broke. I think the cats were climbing on it. It created two and I just let them go. I let nature do its thing. And finally, we're starting to get some growth, some buds. Eventually, this will be a productive tree for us. So we just kind of let it go. Also, with this tree here, this big one that we just saw, it was um, in the ground like this. And then we had some bad storms in the fall last year. And the ground was really wet. And it tilted like this. I thought we were going to lose it for sure. But it actually turned out to make it. We staked it up. Here, I'll show you. I just wanted to stake it up so it wouldn't pull back that way and keep it this way. Actually, this lean for me is really good because then I can get, a, I can get up here higher and get the apples. <laughs> so it's actually, it might be good to actually slant your uh, apple trees. I've seen that in some places uh, where people actually uh, slant their apple trees. So this one's doing really good. Uh, a couple of these. I'll get you the name of these on the next video. So because I have them inside on my paper. I was telling you guys about keeping track of what you plant and where. All right, let's get on with this gas station video. Are you ready? Man, do you guys even remember this place? Yeah, so if you're new around here, we started this project last year and it's going to be a studio for my wife uh, to work out in and all that stuff. She's a real fitness buff. And I'm also going to use it for a studio and we're also going to use it for a learning center where we'll be holding classes on site here so you guys can get your fingers all hands and dirty and learn all this off-grid living and sustainable living and growing food stuff hands-on in person. So we're working on that so stay tuned. Um, it'll be a lot faster than our cookbook. <laughs> but that's what this building is right here. So I'm going to grab these gas cans and we're going to get on with this gas video. So I turned the generator on there because I have a, a pump down in that basement there. It's actually our root cellar. We have so much to update you guys on. Everything's working fine with that, but for some reason I don't think the charge controller is working on the system that we got there. I think Smokey needs to eat. And yeah, it's still windy. Ha! Smokey Joe, Sadie. Come on here. Give him a little sweet pea just for a little treat. Come on, Sadie girl. Sadie girl. Come on. Is that wind scaring you? Come on. That a girl. How you doing? Good morning. 
All right, you enjoy your little snack. So this is the gas station that we put together for our homestead here because we live off grid. And we do use some, we have a sawmill and chainsaw and log splitter. You know, there's some things that we need gas with. So instead of running to the store every time, I came up with an idea to get one of these 100 gallon tanks and use it for fuel here on the homestead. And then I put on a little trailer so that way I could drive it into town and fill it up when I wanted to. And all this is really good in theory, but there is a problem with it. Apparently the DOT has regulations against traveling with 100 gallons of unleaded fuel on the highway. Still pretty windy out. We are only allowed to travel with 400 pounds of unleaded fuel on the roads. So thanks for all your comments about that because the instructions were kind of hard to understand. It was talking about flammable fuel and then it talked about combustible fuel, which there's a difference. Unleaded fuel is what you call flammable because it has a low spark rate which means a, a tiny spark could set it off diesel fuel is inflammable but it is combustible which means that a little spark isn't going to set off a diesel gas so that's your difference right there and that's what kind of got me in the trick bag now you can have a tank like this on your property if you're going to have somebody come fill it up that has a licensed driving you know rules and regulations and placards and all that business but it works like a charm okay no problem whatsoever let's go in the shop out of this crazy wind hold on to your hats I mean, every day it's been gusty like this. I mean, we wanted a little, a little house on the prairie, but I don't know. We might be taking it a little bit too far. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about some facts if you guys are going to transport or handle gas on your homestead, okay? Fact number one, each gallon of gas weighs about six pounds. The DOT, which stands for Department of Transportation, recommends and actually legalizes traveling with 400 pounds or less of gasoline on a trailer or any receptacle as you travel about on the roads, okay? So if you take 400 and you divide that by six, that's gonna give you about 60 gallons worth of fuel that you could travel with, okay? So if you look for like a 40 pound, uh, 40 gallon drum, a lot of guys use 50 gallon drums. You guys were leaving those in the comments, uh, the barrels and then hooking up the uh, manual pumps to those. That sounds like a great idea too. I was just worried about it kind of the tip over factor. So I liked this tank because it was long and squatty. So I wouldn't have to worry about it rolling around too much uh, once I anchored it down. So that's one thing to look at um, and then try to figure out from there. I'll still be able to use this trailer and my outfit and what I've designed so far. I just have to switch that over to the diesel. As I mentioned earlier, it's perfectly legal to travel on the roads 
with a hundred gallons of diesel fuel in the back of your pickup or on a trailer or however you want to transport it. Because the difference of the fuels is one is flammable, which like I said, the vapors and everything about it is it's just a little more touchy um, around sparks or static electricity. Whereas your diesel is not a flammable, it's actually a combustion, combustionable, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but it's a combustionable. So you cannot travel with that much unleaded, but you can travel with that much diesel. I'll end up using all that gas here shortly. I'll put it in the truck just to get rid of it quick. I'll change the filter, let it air out for a while, and then I'll put diesel gas in there, and then I'll have 100 gallons of diesel on spot for the skid steer that we'll have here pretty soon, um, and for the new truck that we have outside that you guys are gonna help name. <laughs> And the other thing that you guys talked about was the tape. I used the regular Teflon tape they use for plumbing. That's not recommended for uh, application with corrosive gas. So you wanna use um, a corrosive type of tape for your threads when you're threading everything together. So I'll be taking off the pump and replacing those uh, tape with on the threads there so thanks for that suggestion too sometimes when you're going you know and you want to get things done you're just kind of grabbing what you have around here um, but that was a good tip so we don't want to have any problems with the threads uh, that tape actually dissolving and getting into the gas and all that stuff you have a filter to help protect against that stuff but why create any more problems than you actually need to so that was another good tip that you guys left down in the comment section i always try to go through the comment sections and check them out a lot of good tips down there and as always in our videos uh, you know enjoy what we're doing get some ideas from it trust but verify those are the two for sure don't travel with 100 gallons of fuel on the roadways of unleaded fuel and uh, don't use regular Teflon tape when you're putting gas fittings together it's a yellow tape some places uh, there's other colors but it's a highly uh, more corrosive uh, tape that'll hold up better in the long run also what we got here is a bunch of stuff from the outdoor shower i got the outdoor shower all put together so we're up and functioning with that so on the videos coming up we're going to be talking about the root cellar show you guys how well we fared from our crops from last year to this year a lot more in the garden videos you guys are digging those and uh, learning about planting food and growing it food and then we're going to show you how to harvest food and we're actually going to show you how to harvest it in a way that you're going to get the most nutrients because uh, there's some ways you can harvest the food and all you're doing is killing all the good enzymes in the food actually and all you're doing is creating a filler so when you're hungry you're not getting any good nutrition but your stomach is blowing out <laughs> so stay tuned for those videos I'm gonna get down to the uh, garden right now and help Stacy knock out some of that we got some more beds to make so thanks for stopping by the homestead if you got any questions, leave them down below. And as always, thanks for your comments on these videos. Sometimes they really help out a lot.